Chad Wolf, and uh, he served in that position you just heard about that Alejandro Mayorkas sits in right now, and he was the acting DHS secretary back in the Trump administration. Chad, thank you for coming on. Maybe give us some context of what you think today means, this, uh, you know, these dueling visits to the border from a current and former president. Well, I think the most important thing is the the importance that both the president, President Biden and former President Trump are putting on border security and immigration enforcement. I think by any any poll that you see out there, that's what most Americans are really interested and care about now. I think both visits, though, are going to be dramatically different. Uh, President Biden's going to be in South Texas, as you indicated, uh, your reports indicated, not a very uh, it's not a hotbed of activity at the moment, or at least it hasn't been over the month of uh, February. Mm -hmm. um, he, and he's likely going to talk about legislation that is stalled and, and is essentially dead. Uh, whereas President Trump, my guess, is an eagle pass. He's going to talk about the ongoing crisis and solutions that uh, he implemented during, the, during his administration to get this under control. All right, so while we wait for those speeches to happen, let's bring our telestrator up to talk about exactly what you brought up, and uh, Brooke and Allie talked about it in their reports. You have two presidents here. It is 330 miles apart, Trump Eagle Pass and, and Biden in, in Brownsville. But if you take a closer look at these ports of entry throughout uh, the, the border region and the southern border, the, the Rio Grande Valley uh, region here, uh, that's where the, the current president uh, will be, right? Right in this, uh, right. In this area. So that's... You see the numbers there. I'll, get, I'll show it a little closer in a moment so that the viewers can get a better idea. Whereas uh, the Del Rio sector right here is busier to the point where if you switch it over like this and take a closer look, look at that. Del Rio, that's um, Eagle Pass, Rio Grande Valley, that's Brownsville, where President Biden will be. So, Chad, this number here, this 99,224 fiscal year 2023, the Biden administration would say, well, this is a success story if you go from that to that, 76,436. And as, as Brooke said, and I think, uh, as you were pointing out, Republicans are saying, no, no, the opposite is true. You're not seeing what's really going on now. So uh, tell us your view. Yeah, I don't think that you can look at just one sector of that border. So the Del Rio, you know, either the Del Rio sector or the RGV sector, which is down there in Brownsville, and say, well, it's success or it's not a success. I think you have to look at the totality of the illegal encounters that you're seeing across the board. And by any, you know, me any metric, it's not going in the right direction for President Biden. Overall, if you take the, the border as a whole, those numbers continue to, to increase. You're always going to see ebbs and flows in any one sector, but you've got to look at the totality. And, and when you do that, you see month after month after month, those numbers mm -hmm. continue to either increase or be so in, in, so high right. uh, as to really overwhelm border patrol agents. All right, I'll show you two things then, since we since you brought it up on again back on our telestrator here. One is Trump versus Biden, and that's an easy one to look at uh, visually, just in the chart, because you see in the in the Trump years on the left where we were um, in terms of illegal crossings. That's your point, Chad. Right, 2019 it went up, yeah. back down in 2020. The Biden years, especially at the beginning, 2021, but then in 2022, even more so, the crossings reached an all uh, time. Hi, if we real quick before you respond, we look at the recent yeah. migrant encounters, 242,000. You go up to over 300,000 in December or back in January to 176. So w where would you say we are right now? Have think, uh, it, 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 would it be at least reasonable to argue maybe the worst is behind us and we're going in the right direction or, or not yet? Yeah, I don't I don't know that we can quite say that because we saw in uh, December at over 300,000 illegal apprehensions. That is a historically high number. That's the highest watermark that this country has ever experienced. And that was just over a little over uh, about two months ago. So I don't know that the worst is behind us. The illegal apprehension numbers that you just showed are very, very important. Um, but it's also what do you do with the individuals once you encounter them? Do you return them? Do you release them into American communities? And, and those numbers are also not good for President Biden, which is the mass majority of those individuals are released into American communities and there's other consequences that occur because of that. So you've got to look at not only the totality of the encounters along mm -hmm. the southwest border, but also what happens once those individuals are encountered. Are they returned? Are they repatriated? Right. Or are they simply released? Okay, so that's those pictures on your screen, by the way, that's the president live in uh, the Brownsville area. He's arrived, his motorcade, you see parked behind him, and now he's meeting with some of the Border Patrol agents, local officials and the like, and, and getting a tour of the area before his remarks. There's the president, a better shot as he walks towards us. I think Thanks so much for watching. Just go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.